has been a moment I've been waiting for for I think about 13 or 14 months now. Um, and I placed an order for a vehicle. Uh, I don't know why we're standing by this big white wall, but uh, uh, yeah. Oh no, actually, it's a big van. <laughs> so this is the new, uh, new soon-to-be moto van rig. Let's uh, skip the bad audio and ugly filming and get to the good stuff. introduce to you my 2022 Transit 350 HD 178 inch wheelbase all wheel drive 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost engine with a 17 by 7 by 7 foot fiberglass cargo box. Whew. The plan is to build the ultimate moto hauler camper van. If you thought the build out on my 2017 Transit 250 was cool, this one is going to blow your mind. By the way, I sold that one a few months before receiving this rig. So why the upgrade? Wasn't my old van good enough? Well, yeah, it was incredible. I wouldn't have changed a thing about it given its size. But size does matter when you're spending lots of time in it. I just started to feel cramped in this space. Although it was totally possible, full-time living just wasn't quite comfortable enough for what I wanted. I bought that other van with the intent of weekend trips and an occasional shorter-term cross-country adventure. That turned into doing multi-month trips a few times a year. Life changed for the better, and now I have the opportunity to be on the road full-time. I want a bigger space with more utility to make full-time living and working on the road a bit more comfortable. And that's how I ended up with this massive white box on wheels. In this series, I'm of course going to show the build process, but I also want to explain my theory on design, the what and the why. So let's get going. I started with a list. Room for two to three bikes, the most critical. A comfortable, normal-shaped bed. Functional kitchen space with big sink. A comfortable place to do computer work and eat. Strong electrical power system. Large fridge freezer. Heating. Indoor shower. A big wardrobe. And of course, loads of storage. Sweet. Now you just like, start building, right? Certainly not. This list was made nearly three years ago now. At least a year before I even ordered the van, I began drawing. I had to determine how all of this was going to fit in such a relatively small space. Ultimately, I ended up with the largest available setup you can put on a transit chassis, naturally. But I didn't know that's what I needed until I had a firm plan. One foot less in length or a few inches less in width, and this would be the not so ultimate moto setup. Every inch counts. I started with graph paper. It's cheap, incredibly visual, and makes it convenient to get down ideas when they pop into your head. My friend Tiffany spent lots of hours helping me draw up different ideas while we were traveling and riding together. She's got a van too and chipped in lots of great ideas, so thanks a lot, Tiffany. Now, with a fairly solid idea of how things will be arranged, I head to the computer to get some proper visuals made. I used Google SketchUp because it's free, simple, and I can access it on any computer easily. Having grown up using proper CAD software, I do have to say SketchUp is pretty miserable to use. hundreds of hours and many tweaks and changes, I arrive at the final plan. Well, at least what I think will be the final plan. Let's see how it goes. Don't you dare go anywhere. I'm gonna start cutting holes in my brand new van very shortly. I just wanna mention some of the sponsors that are contributing key components to making this build possible. And if you're looking to do a build yourself, I've already done the research, it checks out. That's why I'm working with these companies. So good information for you. First up is my fridge freezer combo here and this is made by Iceco. I was doing research on different uh, fridge freezer combos. I wanted a top loader in something around 75 liters capacity. I saw this had a lot of good reviews so I reached out to them and uh, they hooked it up with this. Um, it's pretty cool, you can open it this way, you can open it this way. 
And next sponsor that I'll give mention to is Havelock Wool. So this is a natural wool insulation. It's what I'm gonna use for the floor, the ceiling, the walls, just like a wool jacket, a wool blanket. Very good on insulation and keeping things warm in the winter but also keeping heat out in the uh, summer. I actually have a few friends who've used it and they uh, they rave about it. So uh, thanks Havelock Wool for uh, hooking me up with enough to do this massive giant box van. <laughs> <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, thank you so much to Dragonfly Energy and Battleborn Batteries for sponsoring the power system for this build. I did so much research trying to find the best solution and Battleborn kept showing up as the most trusted, reliable, and offering the best customer support. I reached out and they agreed to work with me. They sent me top of the line Victron components and 300 amp hours of internally heated lithium iron phosphate batteries. This should be everything I need to keep the lights on. And a lot more. You can find affiliate links associated with these products in the description below. Please click on them and check out the product to help me and this channel as well as support the incredible businesses that believed in this build becoming a reality. Well, we had a robust power system on the list and part of that is going to include solar power, which needs to go on the roof. So, what do we do? We make a roof rack. Uh, here I am uh, starting to build and install some custom roof rails. They're made out of inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter by 3 16 aluminum angle. That is 60-61 angle, very strong, yeah. reasonably lightweight. And uh, yeah, drilling holes in the ceiling, basically first week of ownership. Gotta get down to the nitty gritty. You can see here I used some more graph paper and a little graph paper cutouts to try and plan ahead for where rails and cross members need to be in order to mount solar panels. This actually worked really well. It was even easier than moving things around in CAD. Since the roof rack rails are a bit hard to manage alone, I worked on other projects until I could get more help. Here I'm marking out cut lines for my Max Air vent fan. I actually will have two of these, one in front and one in the rear. In hindsight, cutting out a square of plywood and tracing around it would have made this a lot easier, but hey, it worked in the end. It was a little scary, not gonna lie, but uh, pretty confident we're good. The reason for the plywood on the inside is to act as a support backing for cutting the fiberglass. It'll also provide a solid screw point for the fan mount shroud. I taped off the seams and holes so when I go to cut, dust doesn't fly all over the interior. It ended up working like a charm. This little grinding wheel worked perfectly for cutting through the fiberglass. And a moment of relief, nice clean piece and a nice fit with a little bit of wiggle room. So another cool thing about having the plywood up there as I cut the fiberglass is it made perfect score marks for cutting with the jigsaw. I wiped the fiberglass on both sides with some alcohol and applied copious amounts of caulk to the frame. I pre-drilled holes through the fiberglass and a bit into the wood to help guide the screws. Removed that, cleaned it again, and then put a layer of butyl tape right around the edge. This is like a double-sided tape on a thick pliable rubber base. Add uh, another copious serving of caulk and slide it right into place. Get some screws started, clamping her down. And then I found you gotta take the screwdriver and do these by hand to get them all actually torqued right. Cover up the screw heads with some semi self-leveling caulk. And yeah, you can laugh at how much I put here, but you know, it got the job done and I don't think it's ever gonna leak water. I think I got pretty good coverage onto the roof and on top of the flange and it fits and it looks like it where it should be. So can't complain about that job. First roof fan ever. Uh, we got second one to put over there above what will be the shower. This one's right over the bed for that nice airflow, right through the van and across it. Should be awesome. All right, my dad's back to help. So back to the roof rack rails. Got chips. 
<laughs> yep, working with my dad is always a fun time. What we're doing here is essentially dry fitting the uh, rail so we can get all the holes pre-drilled. Throw a layer of butyl tape to help seal it to the roof. This was a pretty tedious process, but I think it'll be worth it in the long run having a totally watertight seal between the roof and the rail. Now guys, I swear I actually did do some work on this myself. It's just when my dad was here to help, it's a lot easier if I operate the camera because I know how to do it. Um, go. You gotta go that way a little, I think. I think we can kind of just wiggle them all in like so. Yeah, they're already all in. Oh, good. Okay, so just stick it down. Yeah. Good? Yeah. Sweet. All right. The very last thing we want are leaks, so a little more caulk around the screw. <laughs> I hold a wrench up top. My dad torques it from the bottom. And then a nice goopy layer on top. No leaks. Oh, look at that. Back to the roof fan install. I let off the caulk here before I dropped the fan on there, uh, just so I didn't bump it, break the seal, mess anything up. But super easy from here. Just drop her in and put four script. Oh, um, super, yeah, uh, mm, yeah, really, really? Yep, so really easy. Just put that screw in and you're good. That'll definitely make the cut. This is why help is needed because holding a camera with one hand and doing other tasks with the other, very difficult. And here goes on the second and last roof rail. I'm so happy with how these turned out. It's not done. I still need to add the cross members, but that's going to come in a later episode because I took a little break to do the interior stuff, which you're going to see in episode number two, where I start insulating, putting up a ceiling, the walls. We start to go wild with building stuff, so make sure you subscribe. Check out episode number two. I'm going to try and post it as soon as I can. There's no way, there's no other possibility that we could have screwed that up.